G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam. Now for today's video, I'm going to show you how to load a data set into Salesforce Marketing Cloud and use that data to match against your existing subscribers to create a subset or an audience of subscribers which you can use for a special targeting email, including some personalization fields. So the use case for today is you may have a list of data that your business has which contains some of your subscribers. You have to upload that list into Marketing Cloud and then match them against your existing subscribers to target them or personalize a message to them based on some kind of event or thing that occurred. This of course could be something like an event they attended, it could be a product outage or a credit to their account or a voucher. Whatever it is, it just means you've got a list, you must load it into Marketing Cloud and match it against your existing records. For today's example, I'm going to use the event use case where there was a Trailblazer event and a few of these subscribers attended. Those who attended were able to get a lucky door prize which contained a unique voucher code. We now have to upload that event log data into Marketing Cloud, match it against the existing Trailblazer subscribers, so we can then personalize an email to them. So for today, I've gone ahead and I've made a sample set of data, which I've uploaded to the GitHub. You can check it out in my samples folder, we've brought the event log.csv. This one will relate to the sample rows uh, log as well, so you can download both files and use them for today's use case. You can see in this data, we do have the ID of each subscriber as well as their first name, of course, there's no email address or subscription flag. It was an event after all. We do have if they attended the event, true or false, their lucky door prize amount and the voucher code for their prize. So with this information, we now need to download this data. Let's click on that raw button as before. You can then right click, go save as. We can save that data into our local drive. Just like that and save. So we have our local data. We can now go into Marketing Cloud and make ourselves a data extension to suit. So back over in Marketing Cloud, let's go and create our brand new data extension. We'll choose Create and choose to make a standard data extension. Call this one our Event Log. Now I'll make this data extension using all the same fields that we have in our CSV here for our Event Log. So the first field is an ID field, text about 50 characters long. So ID, text 50 characters long. This is a primary key as it was the Event Attendance field, so I'll tick the primary key field. Jump over to our next field, which was the first name field. First name, of course, 50 characters, leave as nullable. Go across to our attended event. And this one is a Boolean field, true and false. So we'll choose attended, Boolean, nullable just in case. Next one's our lucky door prize, a numeric field. So we'll choose lucky door, it'll be a number. Nullable, of course, because there were some nulls in there, some empties, those who didn't attend the event. And finally, the voucher code, another text field. And again, about 50 characters long. So we'll go voucher code, text 50, and nullable, of course, for those who didn't attend. And there we are, ready to go. So we'll create our event log data extension. Now, of course, we'll have to make our sendable data extension, which we'll be using to send this data to. We only want to target those customers that are eligible to receive this marketing email. So for example, we just want our subscribers who are currently subscribed, yes to marketing, and who attended the event. So let's go forth and find how we can build this data extension. We'll go create, and we're going to choose to use our existing sample rows data extension. So I'll go choose existing. We go into our folders here and choose the correct folder. I'll then choose our sample rows and use that as our starting point. That will be sample rows event email. So our sample rows event email will be a sendable testable data extension, of course. And it's going to have all of our existing fields in it. Now, for this send, we don't exactly need a few of these fields. So I'm going to drop out the role. We don't need role. Don't need their join date, but we should probably keep their email opt in just for good measure. What we do also want though for this send is the additional information. So we're going to want to know if they attended the event. This will be worth keeping, of course. So attend the event, true or false, Boolean field. We're going to also want to know if they have a lucky door prize. And so I'll bring that value in. Lucky door prize was, of course, a number. And the voucher code. Perfect. Voucher code 50 nullable. Now, of course, our relationship for this one, the ID is the subscriber key. So ID relates to subscribers, unsubscriber key. Perfect. Everything else here is looking pretty good. So with that, I'll go create. With the data extension created, we can now jump in and import our event log data directly into our data extension. Now, again, if you like, you can check out my video on how to import data into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. For today, we're going to choose the desktop upload version. But of course, if you have a much larger data set, you may have to use the FTP option instead. So for now, I'm going to go into my event log, click on the import button, and then I can choose to import from my computer. 
browsing to import our event log. There it is. Open up our file. Now our import log here has a few good fields in it that are comma separated. So again, comma. The data is Australian data formatted. We're going to choose to overwrite our data. With that, we'll go next. And of course, it's a nice small file, so we should be able to, because we have mapped with the correct field names, use the map by header row. You can see that it's all mapped up nicely. So we'll go next, check out our values, all looking good. And so we'll choose to import. Perfect. While that's importing, we'll jump back into the GitHub and just have a quick look at how many rows there are. There's one header row, 10 in total, so there is nine sample rows in here. So back in our data extension, let's have a look to see if nine records have come through. Still processing, so I'll give it a minute and hopefully we'll see nine records get uploaded. Perfect, and the upload's complete and we have nine records in our event log data extension. Now we can jump into Automation Studio and create our SQL activity. With our data extension completed, I've now jumped over into Automation Studio under Journey Builder. And in my Automation Studio overview, we're going to make a brand new automation. So I've got a new automation. We'll call this one our match event SQL. Now for our match event, we're going to make a schedule just so we can make a quick send here. And of course, we're going to be using an SQL activity to bring our data together. So with our SQL activity, we'll go choose. And of course, we're going to be making ourselves a brand new query activity. So I'll choose create new activity. This one's going to be our sample rows event log match. And we'll go next. And for this SQL, of course, we can use our trick by going into our folder and bringing in our event email rows that we need to populate as part of this SQL. So let's now go through and quickly format this out just so it's easier to read. Perfect. And of course, like every SQL, we'll start off with select. We're selecting the ID, the first name, and so on and so forth from what? Well, we should probably start things off from our sample rows, our main subscriber set. It's a pretty good place to start with because that's going to be where all of our customer data is. So we'll start with sample rows. We'll call that one uh, S for sample rows. We then want to make sure they are currently subscribed in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So I do want to uh, left join onto our all subscribers table. So I can jump into my data views really quickly. In my data views, I'm gonna make sure I use my subscribers table. So underscore subscribers, that one there. Underscore subscribers. And of course we'll be doing that as A for all subscribers. Matching on, that's gonna be A dot subscriber key. I believe is the all subscribers field there. Subscriber key, yes it is. And of course looking then back into our data table, it's the ID field is subscriber key. So we're all subscribers dot subscriber key is equal to our sample rows dot ID. Perfect. So I have that left join in there. We also then have to left join in that event data. So another left join and this time onto our event log. So I'll pick up the event log, put it in there. Event log I'll call E for event log. That's going to be joining on what? Well, in the event log, what do we have? We do have an ID field, so it'll be e.id is going to be equal to our sample rows ID, so s.id. Perfect. That's how we now join up all of our data. So that done, we can now start to make our where clause for our SQL statement. So which subscribers do we want inside of our data extension? Well, we'll start with our where clause and make sure that we are picking up the subscribers who have attended the event. So where the attended event is going to be equal to true. So we'll take attended event. So of course the event log, so that's e.attended event is going to be equal to what? Well, it's true. We want those who did attend the event. Perfect. This will be a marking send. So we also want and where their sample rows data, our main customer view here, where their email opt-in is also equal to true. So in our sample rows, that is going to be s dot, that's email opt-in. It's going to be email opt-in in. It's going to be equal to what? Well, true, because I believe it is a Boolean field. Yes, it is. Now, finally, we're going to do one more check. We're going to say and, we want to make sure that either their all subscribers status is active, they are currently subscribed, or they don't have a subscriber status because they're not a current subscriber who's been receiving emails. This will be their first email. So to do this, we're going to say and either they're all subscribers, which will be a for all subscribers dot status. We'll double check this, go into our data views and now subscribers status. There it is there. Must be equal to active. 
So that or, because we are inside the round brackets now, so it's either, either active or their uh, subscriber status is null, which means it cannot be found because there was no match made from sample rows onto subscribers. There is no record of that subscriber in all subscribers, therefore their value is null. So we'll check it out. Before we do, we have to, of course, specify the origin of these data tables. So our sample rows is where we'll get our ID from. Sample rows, so S dot. First name, now first name did occur, I believe in the event log. So on their event log, first name and in sample rows. So we have a choice to make. Do we want to use the first name that the customer gave us at the event or the first name that we have on record for them in our sample rows data? Well, I do want to try and use our sample rows data. That is of course our central view of our customers. So I want to use S for our sample rows, our existing known name for that customer, not what they gave us at the event. The email address, of course, there was the email address given at the, uh, at the event. However, there is an email address field in all subscribers. In our subscribers list here, we do have email address. So we want to use the email address in all subscribers or the email address we have on file for them in our main customer view. Well, again, I'd rather use our main customer view, so I'll choose S as location of that one for our sample rows set. The email opt-in, of course, is coming from our sample row set as well. The event attended flag comes from our event log, which was E, so we'll use E dot. The lucky door prize also came from E, so E dot, and the voucher code also from E. There we are. With that all done, let's check our syntax and see how we're looking. Valid syntax, perfect. So with that, let's go next, and we're now going to go and populate our data extension. So in our folder, we're now going to populate our event email send. There it is there. As an overwrite, go next, check our values, all looking good, and go finish. With that done, we can now save and run once our automation to populate our data extension with a combination of those two data extensions. So while we wait for the SQL activity to match those records together, I'll have a quick look in the data extension. And we can see here there's a few records with the email opt-in equals true. There's a few that also have false. And likewise, over in our event data log, we also have a few records who did not attend the event. Now per our SQL where condition, we only want records who have both attended the event and are currently subscribed. So Astro, Einstein and Brandy all attended the event. Now also currently subscribed to marketing. See, Astro is true, Einstein is true, and so is Brandy. There's a few more below here as well. So let's have a quick look back in the automation and we'll see if we now have completed, perfect. And how many records do we have that have been true to subscribe and true to the event? There is apparently, perfect, just those three. Just those three members, was it Astro, Einstein, and Brandy? It was indeed, perfect. We have those three records ready to go. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to upload a data list into Salesforce Marketing Cloud and match it against your existing subscribers to create a new audience to send a targeted email to. If you enjoyed today's video, then please let me know in the comments below with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.